श्रीमुत्थु करुपन आनंदपुर वाइस चेयरमैन सर, आई एम थैंकफुल टू माय लीडर डॉक्टर प्रोचित दलवी अम्मा एंड आल्सो टू यू फॉर गिविंग मी द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू डिस्कस द रीजनल रूरल बैंक्स अमेंडमेंट बिल ऑफ 2014 I would like to make certain suggestions regarding this bill. The regional rural banks were established with a view to develop the rural economy and to create a supplementary channel to the cooperative credit structures to enlarge the institutional credit for the rural and agricultural sector. The regional rural banks accepts deposits primarily from rural, semi and urban areas and provide loans and advances mostly to small and marginal farmers, agricultural laborers, rural artisans and other segments of priority sector. In the statement of objects and reasons, the Honorable Finance Minister has mentioned about the need to amendment the Regional Rural Banks Act of 1976 to strengthen the Regional Rural Bank's capital base and improve their overall capacities. Sir, my first point is, the financial assistance by the sponsoring banks beyond five years of setup of RRBs is understandable. But managerial assistance beyond five years of setup means control of the RRBs through the higher occurrence of managers of regional rural banks appointed from the sponsoring banks. Sir, instead of managerial assistance from the sponsoring bank, the FX body of RRBs can have a pool of experienced executives who can be debited to the RRBs. Again, sir, here I would like to inform that as per the Ministry of Finance, instructions of branch level staff and officers of regional rural banks from 2012 to 2013 onwards are done through a common written examination institute of banking personal selection similar to the procedure followed in public sector banks. Again, sir, while this being the case in lower level staff, why should we want to control the RRBs through managerial assistance of sponsoring banks, which actually mean remote control by the sponsoring banks? My another point is, sir, capital norms. Raising the authorized capital of rupees 2,000 crores with minimum fixed capital at rupees 1 crore, and also fixing the minimum issued capital rupees 1 crore. This is a good proposal as the quantum of capital required for the operational requirement of RRBs in their enhanced working capacities is huge. I no doubt that increased capital for RRBs means increased rural credit dispersal. I fully support this move, sir. The another important point is sharing share, shareholding pattern, sir. Allowing RRBs to raise their capital sources other than the central and state governments and sponsoring banks with the caveat that in such a case, the combined shareholding of the central government and the sponsoring bank cannot be less than 51%. Additionally, if the shareholding of the state government in RRB is reduced below 15%, the central government would have to consult the concerned state government. My opinion is against this. Further, sir, the state governments already hold on 15% share and that need not to be allowed to be reduced. My leader, Honorable Amma, always stressed that shareholding pattern of public sector institutions should never be allowed to be diluted, detrimental to the interest of the common poor. An important example is when 5% shares of the public sector, Naivali Lignite Corporation was out to be disinvested, my leader, Honorable Amma, negotiated with the central government and other regulatory authorities and ensured buying of the shares by the government of Tamil Nadu so that the larger objectives and legal rights of the public sector institutions and the workers do not suffer even in the distant future. This bill states that any person who is a director of a regional rural bank is not eligible to be on the board of directors of another RRB. This is a good measure and support the move, sir. Another thing, sir, another proposal in the amendment bill is enabling the central government to appoint an officer of the central government to the board of directors to ensure effective, effective functioning of the RRB, considering the field level hands on exp and experience of state government officials. The proposal should be enabling appointment of officer to the board of from the central government or the state government to board 
and if such appointment is made from the central government, the state government should also be consulted and only after the concurrence of the state government, such appointment should be made. Another point, I am making this point very specific because at no point of time any attempt should be made to remote control any RRP in the wheel of appointment of an officer of the central government. The suggestions of, suggestions of Reserve Bank of India, the Reserve Bank of India has mandated that all new banks will have to open 25% of their branches in unbanked rural areas. Existing banks are also pushed to open more branches in rural centres. The rural India has only 36 branches for every 10 lakh people compared with over 100 branches in urban areas. According to a survey, even if banks open 25% of their branches a year in rural areas, the number of branches per 10 lakh persons in rural areas will reach only 70 by 2020. To prevent people in rural areas from borrowing at usury rights from money lenders and parking money with non-established cheap funds, banks must be must use business correspondence as a temporary measure to bright their banking divide. Under the guidance so, of my leader, Honorable Lamma, the government of Tamil Nadu has written a letter to the Prime Minister of India in and also the Finance of... Minister mm. in order to provide the LPG case subsidies to the people. The rural banks must, have, must be established in each village. So further, you. to provide the marriage mm. assistance to the girls given by the Honorable Lamma, 25,000 to 50,000 for graduate girls and old age pensions, etc., to the old, old age people of Tamil Nadu, the rural banks are essential for each rural habitation. Thank you for, thank you for Amman, also thank you for the chair. Thank you. Sir.